Welcome to the first episode of Characterization with Shanli. It's Shanli, I'm a master's student of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering Department at Gazi University in Ankara, Turkey. It's a great pleasure to embark on this scientific journey, starting with X-ray diffraction, XRD, analysis. X-ray diffraction is widely used technique for determining a sample's composition and crystalline structure. For larger crystals such as macromolecules and inorganic compounds, it can reveal us the atomic arrangement within the sample. But for the small crystals, X-ray diffraction also can provide us information such as the phase purity, crystallinity and the sample composition. This technique involves directing the X-ray beams through our samples. The X-rays are specifically chosen due to their wavelengths comparable to the spacing between the atomic arrangement. This allows the diffraction angle to be influenced by the atomic arrangement within the sample, unlike the longer wavelengths which are unaffected by the atomic spacing. The X-ray passes through the sample bouncing of the atoms in the structure and changing direction of a specific angle, theta, related to the original beam. This angle is known as the angle of the diffraction. Frankly, I want to explain you the constructive and destructive interferences of the waves. In the destructive part, which cancel each other. So as a result, we're gonna have these gonna cancel each other. Also, these diffracted beams and the at the end, these two beams going to cancel together. So our finalized result gonna be a diagram like this. But for the constructive interferences of the waves, let's imagine to have these two diagrams. One of the similar wavelengths undergo to the constructive interferences interferences occurs when the similar beams are uh, going to multiply by each other and make a beam with a higher amplitude. Result of new beam with higher amplitude corresponds to a stronger signal at that specific diffracted angle. Also, we can calculate this diffracted angle using the equation of Bragg law. Before we start explaining the Bragg's law equation, I want to give you some more information about this equation in this part of our clip. In 1913, Sir William Henry Bragg and Sir William Lawrence Bragg formulated a relationship explaining X-ray reflection on crystal cleavage phase, introducing X-ray diffraction as evidence for the periodic atomic structure of the crystals. Their pioneering work as a determining the structure of sodium chloride and zinc sulfide and diamond earned them 
the 1915 Nobel Prize in Physics. After a little informative break, let's continue with Bragg's Law. For explaining the Bragg's Law, I want to start with the drawing the atomic planes. So, let's imagine this circulate shapes be our atoms. Which are arranged on our, our atomic planes. Here is the angle of incident. Also, we have 
H K L amounts, which provide us more information about our atomic plane. In the last part of our Bragg's law question, I want to give you some tips about this formula. So uh, this may be be a question also for you. Why we have two theta instead of theta? In exact diffraction experiments, the angle between the transmitted and the diffracted beams is always two theta because of the geometric shape of the, the Bragg law. Also, in this part, D H K L, this amount accounts for the higher orders of diffraction, which is always N. Stay tuned for the next episodes.